It stands for distributed denial of service, a kind of attack that turns insecure internet-connected devices into sort of a zombie army, which, again, fun to say, but definitely bad. My name is Brian Barrett, I'm Wired's news editor, and this is your guide to staying safe on the internet. A DDoS works by harnessing vulnerable devices, sometimes numbering in the millions, and using them to flood a website with so much traffic that it crashes. And not just websites either. Uh, remember when the East Coast lost a big chunk of the internet one day last fall? Not well, it, it did, thanks to a DDoS that targeted not individual websites, but a company that provides the infrastructure for those sites. So how do you stop it? Well, you personally probably don't, uh, unless you're a website that might be targeted by activists or hackers or pranksters, or look, look, you're not a website. And if you were, there are plenty of hosting services that offer DDoS mitigation. The real question is, how do you make sure that your specific devices haven't been enlisted in one of those zombie armies called botnets? First, change your router password. Yes, your router has a password. And botnets usually take advantage of devices that stick with the default, the one it shipped with. Next, while you're in there anyway, disable a feature called Universal Plug and Play in your router settings. It's like a little loophole that lets attackers in, and you won't miss it when it's gone. Honestly, that's about what it takes, or at least it's a good first step. It won't stop a DDoS from taking down your favorite site, but at least you won't be part of the problem. or infect websites with malware. Cyber security researchers hackers have cracked the security layer that protects
Hackers have cracked the security layer that protects Wi-Fi networks, potentially allowing them to intercept encrypted data or infect websites with malware. Cybersecurity researchers in Belgium say the attack works by using a so-called four-way handshake, starting from when the user puts in the correct Wi-Fi password. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security's recommended installing vendor updates on affected products, such as routers provided by Cisco Systems or Juniper Networks. Any device connected to a Wi-Fi network could be affected, but it only works if the attacker is within range of a victim. Researchers say it could be catastrophic to a certain version of Linux and devices running on Android 6.0 and above. Okay, by now you've probably at least heard the term mesh Wi-Fi, but maybe you aren't sure what that exactly means and what the benefits are and why everybody's talking about it all the time. So I made this video to try to help you guys decide if mesh networks or mesh Wi-Fi are right for you. Spoiler alert, I actually think it's really good for a lot of people. And full disclosure, Samsung sent me their latest one for this video. And actually that one in particular, I think probably has the most benefits of any of the ones that are out right now, as well as a couple of benefits that might push you over the edge to get a mesh network when you were kind of debating it before. But we'll get to more of that in a sec. First up, what is mesh Wi-Fi? Normally your Wi-Fi network in your home works by having a Wi-Fi router sitting in one spot connected to your modem, or it might be a modem router combo in one and it projects a Wi-Fi signal within a certain radius around itself that allows your devices to then connect to each other or through the modem and to the internet. Now in a Wi-Fi mesh network, however, there is one main router that plugs into your internet modem in the same way a traditional one does. But then there are also other hubs that are identical to the main router hub that you can place throughout the house, generally on the edge of the original one's range, to then increase the range of the network. Now it essentially does this by having a super fast connection between each of the satellite hubs and the main hub plugged into the modem. And then each hub produces its own Wi-Fi network that your devices can connect to in order to communicate with each other or through the modem to again, access the internet. Okay, so let's say for example, you had 30 hubs all positioned in a cluster. And yes, a lot of these mesh systems support that many hubs. The smart things one I'm using supports up to 32 actually. The signal would not just get passed through the hub you're closest to, to the next one, the next, until eventually through to the main hub connected to the internet. It'll actually find the fastest way through the other hubs to do so. Even if that way isn't the same every time, uh, they use a different route. For example, let's say there's traffic on one of the hubs and it's being overutilized, it can actually skip that hub and use another one that's nearby. Now the most popular benefit of these mesh Wi-Fi networks, of course, is better range. Also, the satellite systems don't need anything besides being plugged into a power outlet either. So there's a lot of options on where you can put them. You can put these all over your house and cover it all in super satisfying, strong Wi-Fi signal. And even in a smaller space like my apartment, for example, you can use it to actually further your five gigahertz coverage, which has a much faster throughput, but is a much shorter range than your 2.4 gigahertz. Another benefit is they're basically the easiest setup ever. This Samsung one in particular was stupid easy. I simply plugged in one hub to the modem's ethernet and plugged it into the wall. Then I opened the SmartThings app and selected add a device and within a minute or so, it was up and running. Then each subsequent hub I added, I just plugged into an outlet, opened the SmartThings app again and actually this time it automatically found the hub and I just selected the option on the screen to extend my current network instead of creating a new one and boom, seconds later, could walk to the next location and do the same for any others that I needed to add. Literally could not be simpler. Next, most mesh network systems have apps that are super intuitive for controlling guest access, access to the internet, setting up different networks, etc. The SmartThings Wi-Fi mesh system takes that basically to an extreme. Not only can you easily use the app to say, create a guest access password, you can even restrict them to only using the internet so they can't access your external hard drives on your network, for example, or give specific devices their own specific passwords. You can also see what devices are connected to the network, which hub they're connected to, their signal strength, give them custom names, etc. So all of these mesh Wi-Fi's also do some sort of like optimization of the network. But this SmartThings one actually, I think takes that to another level that I haven't seen any other ones do with the use of AI. 
It's equipped with technology from a company called Plume that allows it to adapt to internet usage and prioritize bandwidth for devices that need it most when they need it. So the laptop that you use to game on or the smart TV you're streaming on gets the faster speeds when they're being used and the IoT devices like your light bulbs that don't need speed but just need lower latency instead receive that, etc. And sure, you could do this with a traditional router, but you'd have to go into the very unfriendly router settings through your computer internet browser and manually do this for each device. Whereas with this system, it's just done automatically over time without you having to touch anything at all. And finally, for the last benefit, again, pertaining just to this SmartThings Wi-Fi that I'm using right now, it actually has a built-in SmartThings hub. Now what that means is that you can control and monitor hundreds of connected devices. So with SmartThings Wi-Fi, you don't need to buy a separate smart home hub. It's already included in this mesh system. And now for some of the downsides to mesh networks. First up, the price. Generally speaking, some of these mesh networks can be a lot more expensive than a traditional router, ranging upwards of $500. But honestly, some, like the popular Google Wi-Fi mesh network and this SmartThings Wi-Fi one that I've been using this whole time, are $279 for three hubs, which isn't bad for that kind of coverage. And with the SmartThings Wi-Fi, as I mentioned, it has the added benefit of that AI to make life super easy and the SmartThings IoT hub built in, the reasons I'd recommend it over basically all the other Wi-Fi mesh options out there, honestly. So, should you get it? Well, if you don't have several connected devices at home or even dead spots, you might not need a mesh network. But if you're like me and a lot of people that I know, you probably have a lot of devices connected to the network like phones and laptops and tablets and maybe a smart TV, some smart light bulbs, etc. In that case, it could just be a good idea to upgrade to this mesh network anyway. It just, to me especially, it just feels kind of like the new version of how Wi-Fi is going to work. What's happening YouTube? Josh Tedder here from six months later and today we'll be taking a look at the Google Wi-Fi home mesh router. Now this is a router we previously reviewed in a video six months ago. So in this video we'll be doing our in-depth six months later review of the Google Wi-Fi router. You know if your Wi-Fi network is offline or online within the app and it's easy to share to friends and family over a variety of great performance and everything just works really well and will receive a strong signal from the main router. Now when you have a Google Wi-Fi mesh network made up of multiple Wi-Fi points, what happens is another great feature that I like about the Google Wi-Fi app is not only can you test the Wi-Fi speed from the router to your device, you can also test the internet speed coming into your home, what I would recommend. If you have anything over a thousand square feet, I'd at least look at the three pack, take Wi-Fi away as punishment or for a timeout. And you can of course block adult websites to any of your kids' devices with this feature. Creating a guest Wi-Fi network is also incredibly simple with the Google Wi-Fi. All you have to do is decide what you want to name the guest network and the password for the guest network 